Today, I'm going for our first run in the New Balance Tempo. Sixteen point two two miles, eight minutes, eleven seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty two beats per minute. Taking the fresh foam tempo out for a first run today. Uh, today's workout was a little bit of just a regular long run for the first half, and then on the way back, I did some fartlek style work. Seven minutes on, three minutes off, uh, so that way I could really give the tempo uh, a good first test. Uh, before I get into my detailed thoughts on how it went, though, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money, so no one sent it to me, and no one's paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of this footage before you get a chance to see it on YouTube. Now, with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the New Balance Fresh Foam Tempo. Now, this is a six millimeter heel drop shoe with Fresh Foam X in the midsole, which is a newer foam that I've seen already once in the New Balance 1080 version 10, which I thought was a really exciting shoe. So to kind of put the comparisons into context. Uh, the New Balance Beacon has been one of my favorite New Balance shoes to run in. A fantastic daily trainer, can do a little bit of everything. That was just regular fresh foam or ground contact fresh foam. There's a lot of different kinds of fresh foam that New Balance makes, it's a little bit confusing. But the Beacon 2 and the Beacon 1 were some of my favorite running shoes that I've been running in over the past couple of years. The 1080 V10 came in with Fresh Foam X and it felt like a more cushioned, although a little bit heavier version of the Beacon 2, and that was exciting. And then when I heard that this new shoe, this Fresh Foam Tempo was gonna be coming out that had also Fresh Foam X in it, I was pretty excited and I thought maybe it's gonna be like the Beacon, but a little bit faster. So for those days where you want a little bit more speed and don't need so much cushion and comfort uh, for those harder workouts, that's where this shoe I think is supposed to fit. And I think for the most part, it does a really good job of doing that. This shoe borrows a lot of the same design language from the 1080 V10. I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of this kind of like animal print style of shoe from New Balance in 2020, like it or not. Uh, but I think this shoe looks pretty nice. Uh, the fit is very snug, which uh, is consistent with its intended use of going a little bit faster. Think of it like seat belts on uh, a race car or a seat in a racing car. Uh, it's not gonna be like a super comfortable like bench seat that you might find like in an old, like the old school Suburbans, but it's gonna be more like one of those like five point harnesses that you might see in a sports car. Really lock it down so that way you're not moving around when you're at high speed. In terms of the upper, the rest of the upper, it's a really comfortable material up here. Uh, lightly padded tongue, lightly padded heel collar. Everything's kind of just generally staying out of my way, which I think is what I really like for a faster shoe. Uh, on the back, you do have a heel tab here, which is kind of like what they had in the 1080 V10. They had more of an Achilles flare rather than a pull tab, but here they've got a little pull tab, which feels kind of like felt almost. I know it's not, but it kind of feels like that. Uh, and there's a really substantial heel counter. Like this cup is like very firm, very rigid and very big. I do feel like it helps contribute to kind of keeping everything in place and keeping the heel from slipping out of the back. So uh, that all was working for me really nicely together. In terms of the way this Fresh Foam X midsole feels though, it feels a little bit firm 
which again is consistent with something that you're looking for for a tempo day or a faster day shoe. Um, but there is a lot of cushion in the heel. So for this type of workout specifically, seven minutes on, three minutes off. For seven minutes, I'm working at a faster pace. And then for three minutes, I'm recovering and then going back and forth. So on those three minute recoveries, which is a long recovery, but uh, on those recoveries, you're using a little bit more of the shoe. And I definitely felt a lot of nice softness back here. Overall, I didn't get like a huge kind of like boost of performance or a snappy sensation like I might get with something that has a plate or a shank in the shoe. The shoe just feels like a really great fast day trainer, rising to the task that I wanted. Uh, and it's a relatively lightweight shoe and felt really good on foot. The only thing I'll say about this particular shoe is that uh, around mile 14 or so out of my 16 mile run, I felt like I wish there was just a little bit more cushioning up front. Some of that firmness and the fact that this midsole doesn't seem to be super thick up front uh, might be hindering it from becoming like my 20 mile long run workout shoe but for the workout today i think it is just that's the sweet spot for this shoe so it might not be the shoe that you bring with you on your 20 mile long run or your low slow easy day but for those days where you do want to get up on your toes and moving a little bit faster this is definitely going to be able to rise up to the task those are my thoughts so far on the new balance fresh foam tempo let me know if you have any other questions about it down in the comments below i'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there and as i put more miles into the shoe and before I go, I do want to remind you guys about the charity runner for the week. This week, it's Brad Lamb, who's running for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. And he's going to be raising a goal of $15,000 by running the Boston Marathon. Uh, I announced him as the charity runner of the week after I donated $70 of my own money to his fundraising efforts. And since then, so many of you guys have also joined in to support the charity of the week as well. And I want to take a second to recognize you guys. We have an anonymous donation, $71. And then we also have donations from Ben Tarod with $11, Jeff Anderson with 10, Nina Gu with a hashtag Team Kofuzi with $10 as well. Steven DeGalen or Team Kofuzi hashtag of $10. And Michael Sessler coming in again. Michael's been in there pretty much, I think every single week so far this year. Great job, Michael, uh, coming in with $10. Uh, this particular page, it's a little bit harder for me to kind of see who all is donating from here over there just because it's it's listed not chronologically. So I think I've gotten everyone uh, so far who's donated, but even just since yesterday when the charity runner has been announced, that brings us at around $200 already. So, so excited. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?